Good morning, welcome to episode 137. This is Tuesday, August 30th. I'm getting ready to head to Ottumwa, Iowa to take my commercial drone pilot aeronautical knowledge test. I'm just cramming some stuff this morning. I just took my final exam from the class again and I think I'm ready, look at this. I got 60 out of 60 points. Time will tell, let's see if I pass the test. <laughs> Hey, thanks guys. It's good to be here. that did this schedule that were so incompetent, I'm starting to wonder if it's a scam because the building they have me going into to take my test is a dorm. I'm gonna go give it a shot. I know the stuff. As long as the test is given here, next time you'll see me, I'll be a drone pilot. So the testing center was inside of a dorm building, which is insane. I'm done with the test. I wanted to take a second to talk about the test just to hopefully help some of you guys out. I had signed up for the class through remotepilot101.com. I took the class and uh, I took the final exam for that class three different times. First time I got like a 90% and I got an 88% and then the third time I actually got 100% on it. You know, I poured through all the materials. I did some extra learning. I'm pretty certain that not everyone gets all the same questions. I think I literally had zero questions about actual weather. I had to interpret some TAFs and some METARs. There was a question about what a ceiling is. Essentially, I got all the way through the test. You can pin or check mark questions that you're unsure about. I got to the end and that was exactly 18 questions. And so I did the math and 18 questions would have meant I got a 70%. I went back and reviewed them all. I thought the mathematics should be in my favor. It's multiple choice, one out of three. And if you're guessing out of 18 questions, you should accidentally get six of them right. So that would have put me at an 80%. Well, folks, I am happy to say I only missed 11 questions and I don't know if I can actually call myself a commercial drone pilot yet because I still have to get the TSA uh, background check thing, but my grade is a pass. My score was an 82. It was my first take, so forth and so on. So I am a commercial drone pilot. Right now I'm gonna head back toward Moberly. Let us hit thy road. made it home awesome good trip uh, I am quite sleepy there's some stuff bothering me in my yard and I don't mow my own lawn cuz I'm a lazy loser but I got some weeds growing up pretty high I'm sure Caleb's coming soon to help me out but in the meantime I gotta take care of this it's the weeds that give you the trouble I have a weed eater but I'd have to charge the battery and put string in it and to be honest this is just easier I fired True Green because they ran this ridiculous commercial inferring that people that have drones are all peeping toms. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this uh, sunset from on top of the basketball goal, but but don't go anywhere because after the sun sets, I'm gonna tell you everything I learned about passing the Part 107 aeronautical knowledge test. So, yeah. There we go, that should be cool. Alright guys, I have my screen capture software pulled up and I've got skyvector.com pulled up which is a great uh, resource for all things 
aeronautical. Obviously I took the test today, like I said before, I took the Remote Pilot 101 class. I highly suggest it. You should absolutely go there and take that class. It was only 99 bucks. I learned a ton. There are things I still don't know that I'm gonna try to find answers to eventually, but I'm a vlogger and so I've gotta make this content for tomorrow. Instead of going and trying to learn everything, I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I had trouble with on the test that I don't necessarily know the answer to. There was a thing on the test about like, don't share any of the questions or the answers with anybody. So I'm not doing that. The class D airport that I'm gonna have to deal with the most is in Columbia. I've got that pulled up here. You can see on the screen, this dashed blue line means it's a class D or class Delta airspace. This is actually a really good example of one of the questions on the test here. And as of right now, I do not know the answer to this question. So essentially you've got this tower here. The highest point apparently is 1240 MSL or 320 feet AGL above ground level. To fly above that tower, what is the highest point you can fly? Let's pretend that one of them was 400 feet. One of them was 320 feet, because that's the height of the tower and one of them was 720 feet. The way I understand it is that tower is in class D airspace and I cannot fly there without permission. And if I file for a waiver, then technically I could file for a waiver of any height that I wanted since I was filing for a waiver to fly in class D anyway. My understanding, and I could be wrong, but my understanding is if that tower was not in class D airspace and it was in just class G airspace, you would be able to fly above that tower to 720 feet AGL. Essentially that's the tower height plus 400 feet. To be completely honest, I have no idea what the right answer was. Just another way that the FAA got me with a trick question. Definitely find out the answer to that. If there's a tower in class D airspace and it's 320 feet tall, how high can you fly in that spot? Another place I had an issue with. There was a spot like this, the V175. So in my class, I don't remember learning what these blue lines were, but what is the minimum altitude this path can fly at? Definitely find out the answer to that. It seems like there was also a question on the test that had to do with one of these red dashed line. I think I selected a warning area, but that's obviously wrong. I don't know the correct answers, I'm just pointing out the things that I had trouble with. So figure out what that dashed red line there, 11 degrees west, what that stands for. All right guys, back in here to my area. What happens to class D airspace whenever the tower is not manned? I had kind of come across this just doing my own research. Please verify this on your own. But my understanding is that Class D airspace, whenever it is not manned, when the tower is not manned, it reverts to being class E or class G airspace. So that's something to know. What happens to class D airspace whenever the tower is not manned during its effective hours? Verify all that, but that is something that will definitely do you good to, to know the answer to. That's actually really good for me to know. I'll be finding that out for sure, because if I've got missions in Ashland I need to fly, those are all my tips. My biggest tip, honestly, in the whole thing is, this is not a paid endorsement. If they wanted to like refund me my uh, class, that'd be great. Absolutely, the first thing you should do if you're considering taking this test, go over there, spend 99 bucks to take that class, and I, I won't guarantee you'll pass the test. Definitely a step in the right direction. Learn about weather, make sure you can read the different weather briefings. How to read the Zulu time in the weather briefings, that was one that kind of tripped me up a little bit. Know that the remote pilot in command is pretty much in charge of everything. It's your responsibility to know whether or not someone on your crew is impaired for any reason. It's your job to inspect the aircraft, you know, so forth and so on. So go over there and take that class and then uh, let's get flying. If you tuned into this because uh, you were interested in passing your part 107, good luck to you. I hope you're the best. Um, we do do a daily vlog with our family and I include a ton of aerial footage. Anyway, if you're interested to see how my business does, um, be sure and hit subscribe and I will keep you guys posted in regard to how Sphero Tours does in the aerial photography world. So can you give me a few minutes? Good night. Hey, come here. Hey, well, do the wrap with me, okay? Okay. All right. So nonetheless, remember if you're watching this on Facebook, head over to YouTube and share, subscribe, hit that big old thumbs up. Yep. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Life in the Flyover. All right. Good night, girl. Night. See ya. Life in the Flyover. <laughs>
<laughs> going to the dentist right now, and we might be late, but I don't think we're going to be late. It starts at 3, and it is 2.57. It's not the dentist, it's the orthodontist. Yeah. And orthodontists are people who put on braces and all that. Dentists fix cats.